You will be blessed. You will be touched. You will be stirred by the Holy Spirit. Well, if you want to be, you can be. Amen? All you simply have to do is make up your mind from the very beginning. I'm here for Him. I'm not here to see or be seen. I'm here to glorify the name of Jesus. He said when He slipped it up, He said, I will. Not they will. Not possibly. Not I'll think about it. But He said, I will go and do it. If there's any place I need to be, it's closer to Jesus' son. Amen? He's a good God. Can you stand with me tonight? Let's go over and pray with us about this Jesus to minister tonight. I'd ask you from the very honest of the service. Just leave her in on him. Put aside everything else. What you've got to do tomorrow is not important. Right now. What you've done today is over. It's what's happening right now, the counts. So this is the most important time you'll spend in your whole life. So if you would, would you just simply join me in lifting your voices to him tonight? Let's invite his presence. Ask me that. Will you do that? Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you thanksgiving. Because indeed you are the Lord God Almighty. You are He that is more than enough. You are the all sufficient one. You are the ever present help in a time of need, Lord. And indeed, we are a needy people. I pray that the Father this night that you be glorified in the midst of the congregation of the righteous. That everything that has been praised you this night may you open the windows of heaven and may you pour out of your people this night draw us closer.
I promise you that. And when he gets you out, you'll stay out. Amen? He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised this time. I'm going to worship the king. I'm going to live. How many of to worship him in all things? If that be the case, be seated and we're going to receive an offering. Don't let that down for you worship now. That's in the Word of God. That's in that book we talk about. It said he loved a cheerful giver. You know, get a smile on your face. And you give to the Lord. Because think about it. He gave you Jesus. How did you talk that? You didn't do it, did you? You didn't hear that, did you? He gave you Jesus. Yeah. How can you talk that? You can't. I'm telling you, if you give back a portion of the kingdom of God, like I told you last night, the labor is worthy to start. Yeah. I'm telling you, last night, you heard the word of God. Yeah. You're going to hear the word of God again just in a few moments. Yeah. But you know, the word of God says, you not only hearers of the word, but be you also doers of the word. Yes. But you can hear it and you fall out of your seat. But if you don't ever do anything with it, you're never going to change. I don't know about you, but I know about me. I need change. I'm going to be changed. Amen? What about you? What are you going to be changed in the Holy Spirit? Well, if you want to be changed, all you got to do is take hope. That's what God's going to do. You know, you offer in your hand, Father, in the name of Jesus, for the glory and honor of the kingdom of God. We thank you for the privilege of sowing seed in the good ground. I thank you, Father, that you're Seed is going to bring forth a harvest, a bountiful harvest, a plenteous harvest from God. And God is your people, so they're going to be so excited about sowing into the kingdom of God because we have learned that our seed never dies, it never becomes void, but it is always present. And Lord, it just keeps producing and producing and producing. So Lord, as we're obedient according to the Word of God, as we sow according to the Word of God, as we believe according to the Word of God, we shall receive and reap the bountiful harvest that you have promised us. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. As we bless you for the bread. Amen. 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 After you give to us, stand back up with us. Let's pray to God.
the Lord has been good to you. And you come to worship now. Would you just slip your hands toward heaven? And for about 30 good seconds, just worship him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how good he's been to you. When others didn't care anything about you, he cared. It's easy to bless the name of the Lord. It's easy to worship him because of his work. He is worth everything. The scripture said that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. I was unworthy. But he said, despite all my unworthiness, I love his son. He said, I got something for you. I got a life for you. Oh, it's easy to worship him tonight. He has blessed us abundantly. He has blessed us beyond our wildest expectations. Every one of you tonight would have to admit, I never thought God would do this for me. But let me tell you something. He hasn't finished yet. Put up, I'll keep strong on the side. He has not finished yet. He who has started a good work in you is able to finish the work. All you've got to do is get beyond yourself and get in Him. And listen to what He says, what He does. Just learn to be obedient. And you'll eat the good of the land. Just bless him with all that you have within you. He is for the Lord tonight. May you receive the praise and the honor that we have set up in song. And I pray, Lord, help us to find that place that you tonight. We step out of the physical realm into the spirit realm. That we enter in. God, to the hell of this tonight, that you would allow us to come before you tonight and all the of heaven, that you may open up the windows of heaven and pour out tonight, or every one of us is very needy, but your grace is sufficient for every need we have. So Lord, I trust you tonight for the miracle working power of God. I trust you that the Holy Ghost is going to walk these aisles tonight. Touch hearts and touch lives and families. And those here who are hungry for you are going to receive you tonight. I just declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. I'm calling those things that are not yet as though they're going to be. That's what the word tells me to do. So I stand with the authority of that word and I declare this night that your word is true. God, you will move as you see fit. You'll touch who you want to touch. The Lord above all else help us to be submissive to you and say, Lord, come down. Use me in a worthy way. You indeed are a good God, worthy of our praise tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Did your seed continue to keep your mind on the Lord? See the win on Him tonight. Close out everything else. Lay aside every week to the sweet sensation. Turn off your cell phones. God is that important. Put down the other things, the ideas you got, just focus back where we are. Right here. This is where it's happening. For the next little while. So when you get what God's got for you, when you leave the house tonight, you say, Mom, I'm glad I went. It's always a privilege to have my brother, Joseph Collinger, with us. I ain't that God. I can say that about him. Because I spend time with him. I know him. Yeah, I just don't know him in a pool yet. I know him in everyday life. We, we're friends. I see outside the pool bed, he's like he is in the pool bed. That's the kind of guy I'm looking for, amen? That's what I'm preaching the word to be. So I want to welcome Brother Joseph to be in the night of the Cape Town. Just go away the Lord. Let your hearts be open to receive what God's done for me tonight. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good time.
an anointed talent and ability that your worship leader has. Praise God. And just come right into the presence of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And to not have any hesitation. Excuse me. Worship, I believe, takes you into his presence and prepares your hearts for the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's when we come and get into his presence that the cares of the day, the thoughts and the activities of the days previous just begin to vanish away. Amen. And we have no more care for them anymore. And we're just centered and focused on what it is he's saying and what it is he wants to do. Amen. Do you know that God, and many of you know this, but God can speak to you just through the mouth of the preacher. Not just through his word, but to your spirit in a special and a personal way. Amen. That you need to do to you. That you'll understand that must be the voice of the Lord. Amen. And the result every time will be peace. Amen. He speaks peace to our spirits. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for a peace speaking God tonight? Amen.
to say, well, his glory only lasts about an hour and a half, and that's all he's got. No. Amen. When God talked to Malachi about our obedience in tithing and offering and the giving to him that I might be meet in his house, he challenged all those who would hear and said, when you bring it, see if I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amen. Now, that pouring is a constant, continuous pouring. Pour you out a blessing. How do you know it's continuous and constant? Because he said, you will be able to receive it. Hallelujah. All the goodness that I've got. Amen. How unsearchable are your ways and your wisdom past finding out, oh God. Hallelujah. The writer said, amen. I know it's just what you think you've got all you can possibly stand or handle. The goodness of the Lord continues to be poured out and the glory keeps falling. Hallelujah. And your life is continually refreshed and renewed by the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you come into the house of God like you have tonight and you find out that God ain't changed a bit. divine providence and his goodness is constant. In Exodus 33, Moses is absolutely enamored with the very thought of the presence of God. Exodus 33, verse number 12. Thank you, Jesus. Moses said to the Lord in the tent of the tabernacle where he speaks to God face to face. Moses said to the Lord, See thou seest unto me. He said, God, you have told me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know who you will send with me. I want you to notice right off the bat, in speaking to God, Moses just comes clean and clear with who he is and who he is not, and he said, I am inadequate without somebody to go with me to do what you charged me and told me to do. I can't do this on my own. Amen. Hallelujah. You said that you're going to, you will not, you've not told me yet who you're going to sit with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is thy people. God answered him and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up. Hence. Father, thank you for your word. Your will, your way, your anointing, we ask in Jesus' name, for without you we can do nothing. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you as you see with your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to see the very passion that the servant of the Lord Moses had in this moment in time where he says to the Lord, if your presence, and it's amazing that he would say something like that after God just said in the chapter, amen, that my angel will even go before you. I'm going with you, Moses. My presence is going to be with you is what he said in the verse previous. And Moses concluded, if your presence go up with us, it is best that we stay right here where we're at. Now, where were they? Israel was traveling, journeying in a wilderness. And it was a wilderness because it was unfamiliar land and a strange territory and not the land of promise that God had said he was going to give them. Can I tell you it's significant to you and I tonight because you and I
strange land until we arrive in that. Amen. Amen. Now he's a shepherd. Amen. 
he done got married and he's done had some kids. People, what did Moses have kids? You better believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's done raising a family. He's minding his own business. He's running a job. Amen. And he's watching some sheep. and said, Moses, take your shoes off because the place you're standing yeah. is holy ground. I remember a day in the church where people would quote that. My Lord Pastor, they jump out of the pews and they begin to shout and to praise God because somebody had been there before going about life as ordinary until they Amen. Amen. And that God's people. 
want lives that are lived in abundance and we're trying to find that abundance in every avenue except the one where it counts in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. People are looking for joy and going everywhere except the Lord. Amen. Amen. Women think I've come in contact with them. Well, if I just get that man to like me and get married, <laughs> praise the Lord, we're going to have us a great big old life and everything's going to be great. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you what. That's what a woman thought too. Married to Jacob. Amen. Praise the Lord. When finally she's giving kids to him. Amen. And birthing babies. Praise the Lord. She has one and names him. That's the same thing. Moses needed to be changed. 
Amen. 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 In his presence, Moses had some excuses. Why well, can't even talk right? Amen. I got a problem with my speech. Don't you worry about it, Moses? Got that all covered for you. Hallelujah. Who's the Pharaoh? Or who am I that the Pharaoh's going to listen to me? Don't you worry about it, Moses? I got that covered for you. Hallelujah. With all your inadequacies that you keep confessing, there's going to be one that goes with you. Yeah. 
born again. Work your way 
through. Just like Moses understood, it's better that I stay right here as long as your presence is here. Amen. Because you know what would happen when the cloud, uh, amen, the pillar of the cloud would lift up by day, they'd start packing everything up around Israel in the camp. And they said, God's on the move and we're going where he goes. Hallelujah. We don't know what it's going to look like. And we don't know the people that are in the land. But we know if he's there, then everybody's going to know he's there. And they're going to fear God. You know what they said? Amen. Inside that city, Jericho. Amen. We had said we heard about your God. And we heard about what he did in Egypt. We heard of his fame. And we're scared to death of your God. Can I tell you tonight? I just believe the devil is still scared of God. I believe he's absolutely horrified when he gets anywhere near him or even thinks about it. How do you know? Because your Bible said the devil is fear and tremble at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you need to use it more often. Hallelujah. Need to just shout out his name. I don't care who's standing next to you and what they're
this is good to be. Thank you. He is looking in. Mr. Big Stuff. Mr. Big Shot. You know how he got where he was? Because he spent time with the Lord.
He's been somewhere. He got something free. And it was so valuable, so full, so great that he could give it and not lose anything. Well, I do have it. I give it to you. Yeah. Now, I don't believe he was hollering it. He didn't have to scream at that guy. Because you got to think about it. Peter and John, just two ordinary dudes, man. Just fishermen. <coughs> they walk like fishermen. Look like them. Dress like them. Amen. And if you don't know, they weren't on the top of the social ladder. And the economic ladder. Amen. Just two guys. In the name of Jesus. He didn't go long. It's just a few days ago that we celebrated 50 days that he had been gone. But he did something. He didn't leave us without anybody. He told us he's going to send us another. The only one who prayed for it. 
in that whole nation was Moses. Now the rest of them tolerated. The Bible says they'd go out there and watch him. Moses could have gone to the tabernacle. Everybody look, here comes the cloud. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. And Israel was horrified. No, Moses, we don't want to go. We don't want to speak to him. We don't want to speak to us. You go for us. And God's heart's breaking. He wants to speak to his people. You know, one of the greatest gifts in the body of Christ, the gift of the Holy Ghost, is tongues and the interpretation. I love it. Because it shows to us that God loves us and cares for us enough that he'll use a mortal man by the power of his spirit to speak out of heaven and encourage Enlighten and strengthen our hearts. They accused Peter and John. They told them to close their mouths and never speak in the name of Jesus anymore because of what happened to that man. And when their accusation come to a climax, they come to a conclusion that these men are ignorant and they are unlearned. They didn't feel threatened by that. Their problem was is that they said they had been with Jesus. They had been in his presence. Because they're acting just like him. We watched him die on the cross 50 days ago. Two months ago. We watched him die. We know they buried him. And you know what the word was going around Jerusalem was, don't you? The disciples had come by night and stolen his body. Is the word issued from the Romans, and what the guards testify to, that's what Matthew says, is it not? That's the word going around town. The problem was, is that when Peter and John spoke in his name, and that happened to that man, they could not deny the presence of the Lord. They couldn't deny it. stop you when you get in the presence of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can we stand in His presence, please? They perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, and they marveled in Acts four thirteen, and they took knowledge of them that they had been.
God of all heaven and the God of the earth is the God who in a personal way will be found in your life every moment of every day for whatever you need. There's one on. He wants to fill you tonight. Fill your life. Jesus fulfills his promise of being with you always by the Holy Ghost. His spirit lives in your life takes up dwelling with you, abides in you, and that is how he fulfills that promise. Do you know what about the presence of God? Something has been going on here since we came together and some of us haven't realized it, but I'm about to tell you, you've been in his presence the whole night. Right now you're in his presence. And the ability to bring peace and healing and deliverance and help Because, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. He's here. He's here. So I wonder what need that you have, where you're at in life, what's going on in your spirit, in your soul. She'd be willing to come into his presence in this altar. Lift your hands to him and offer it to him. Hallelujah. And say, God, I surrender to your will. I surrender to your word. I surrender to your presence. And ask him to fill me. Fill me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire.
Psalm 35, Psalm 38, Psalm 71. The psalmist implores God, asking Him, saying, Be not far from me. Be not far from me. Don't be far from me, God, please. I can live without a whole lot of things, but I can't live without you. Don't be far from me, please, God. Draw near to me, God. Draw near to me. Don't wait, God will draw near to you if you draw near to Him. You come close to Him, He will come close to you. Hallelujah. He'll help you. He'll be superior. He will deliver you in the day of adversity. He'll raise your hand and He'll lift your hands. <laughs> when they're too weak for you to lift up, too heavy for you to raise, He'll lift your hands up. Raise up the feeble hands and hang down. He said, Raise them up, get on up there. Raise up the hands and hang down. Hallelujah. <laughs> and confirm the weak and the feeble hands. Confirm them. He said, Stand up and be strong in your knee joints. Don't let them buckle. Don't let them get in. Don't let them bow under the weight or the pressure of the strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Lead not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. In the presence of the Lord is what we're talking about. Hallelujah. I read this today, Pastor. For a day in your courts. Yes. <laughs> Talk all night about it in his presence. We've sang about it. You've experienced it. This is a result. The result of the people hungry for the presence of God. A day in your courts. Our better is better than a thousand. Elsewhere. Quiet. 
will be the requirement to handle the weight yes. of his presence. Yes. Come on. Yes. Get hungry. Get thirsty. Get in his presence. God, if you don't go, it ain't worth it. I ain't going. God, if you do go, then I'm going with you. As a church, as an individual, God, if you ain't in it, we ain't doing it. And if you are, we're throwing everything we got into it. Because you said it. Because if his presence goes, we're going with him. He'll make it all right. How many of you know tonight he's walking with you daily? How many of you know it? Give it the best thing I can praise. Somebody with you, bring through somebody with you. That'd be all right. Call it a good, good time. I'm gonna ask. Them.